What up, EuroLeague fans? Welcome to another episode of A Quarter with Kyle Hines. Today, we have a very special guest, um, you know, somebody I know really well, um, my guy, my teammate, Olympia Milan's own Devin Hall. Devin, what's up, man? How's everything? What's going on, man? Thanks for having me up here. Oh, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for taking the time, man. I really appreciate it. The first question, I mean, this is this is your rookie campaign in the EuroLeague. And, you know, we're about halfway through. So, so far, what is your first impressions of EuroLeague basketball? It's a challenge, man. <laughs> I think you learned That's that. Uh, yeah, I think you learned that early. Once you step into the the, the environment, the intensity of the game, um, how it locked in, you know, how focused you got to be uh, every possession and, you know, what's most important for your team, what's most important for you to be successful for your teammates, for your team. Um, I think that, uh, you know, you, you really you really can, you know, hit a wall where, you know, <laughs> you, you, it's, it goes like this and. Absolutely. Uh, you got to you got to try to find a middle ground of, you know, uh, how to how to stay locked in. So um, it's been you know, it's been a, it's been it's been a ride. It's been it's been great so far. I've, I've learned a ton. I'm um, looking forward to the rest of it for sure. Now, is there something that has surprised you about your league basketball that you didn't know, you know, from the outside looking in that once you're in it that you, you know, didn't necessarily think or, or you didn't necessarily know about your league basketball now that you're involved in playing it? I think just the 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 physicality of European basketball in general um, from last year for me playing in Bamberg where, you know, I just, you know, the referees let you play a little more. You can play a little bit more with your hands, a little more contact, you know, vert- verticality, stuff like that. But then when you take a step up and now you're playing in you're playing in, in, in the Euroleague and the bodies are much bigger. Uh, and mm-hmm. guys, you know, you're getting pushed off screens or, you know, you're driving to the lane. It might be a little more contact. They're not calling or they don't see it because, you know, you're not really, you know, it, you're not really getting bumped off your line or whatever. Um, it, I mean, it works to my advantage because I'm a bigger body and, you know, yeah. I'm able to be more physical. Um, uh, and y- you know it as well, you know, with, with <laughs> how you, you use your body. But uh, I think, you know, just the physicality of the game and how intense it is, is uh, you know, it, I mean, it, it can catch you off guard, you know, as soon as you step into – you know, the first practices and, you know, coaches like, hey, you <laughs> got to be physical, you know. Absolutely. Now, speaking of practices, me and you are both fortunate enough to, to play for a Hall of Fame coach and, you know, one of the best coaches in European basketball, um, Coach Edward Messina. So what have you learned from him and what has it been like so far to play with him? Um, it's, it, you know, it's, it's been a, it's been great. Uh, he challenges you in a way to, uh, you know, he, he almost wants perfection out of you. Um, Definitely. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, obviously he knows perfection, perfection isn't attainable, but, uh, you know, he, he pushes you hard. He coaches you hard. Um, he's taught me a ton, you know, taking my time on pick and roll reads, you know, how to use my body, be physical, you know, switching, mm-hmm. pick and rolls, um, just how to be aggressive, when to be assertive, what to look for in certain reads. Uh, he's, he's been great for me. Um, he's definitely challenged me and pushed me. And, you know, you know, sometimes coach gets, you know, really intense, you know, like, you know, you like, you, you may not want to hear it at that moment, but, uh, usually when he's yelling, most of the time he's right. He's most of the time he's right. Yelling. He's yelling for a reason. Yeah, man, he's, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's a, prof- he's a professor at the game, man. So he right, knows, exactly. he knows so much basketball. And like, this, like you said, the small details, the small things like are, I find myself even after, you know, all the years and all the time I played basketball, like I just find myself just listening to him in practice and still learning to this day, you know, right. different things and, you know, different things that he's taught to teach us every day. Yeah, you just I try to figure out, well, I try to understand, you know, it's not necessarily, you know, how he's saying it, but what he's saying during, exactly. the, <laughs> during the moments. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's a, that's a good way to put it. Now, me and you are both Americans, you know, we're foreigners right now playing in Europe. Um, I know when I was in college and I was coming up, I knew absolutely nothing about EuroLeague basketball. So for you, you know, when you were in school, when you were in Virginia, University of Virginia, and you were playing, did you know anything about EuroLeague basketball? Did you know anything about overseas basketball? So I, I knew I knew about overseas basketball, but um, yeah. I didn't know how big uh, – how big it was, how much of a fan base it had, and you know how popular it is around around these different uh, different countries. But um, so, but honestly, right before I knew that I was going to play overseas last year, um, 
I just took a deep dive into just European basketball, coaches, yeah. players. And then last season, I watched so much yearly basketball. And, I'm, and, you know, inherently, you're just going to learn, you know, yeah. a ton. So you learn coaches, where those coaches were, players, where they came from. You know, I, to be honest, I learned a ton about you before I even met you. I'm like, I'm like, this, they're like, they because, you know, before the game, they got the rundown of who the matchups yeah. are. This team's playing, and they're like, okay, Kyle was here, Kyle was there. And I'm like... I know I knew you before, you, <laughs> before <laughs> we, even, we, even, we even had a real conversation. And um, but you just learn a ton just from watching a ton of games. Yeah. And that's all I did. I mean, I honestly I did the same thing when I was uh when I was first coming to your league. When I honestly all I did was watch games. And mm-hmm. that was like one of the best tips that I got um, you know, from some of the older players. Now, was was there somebody else? I know University of Virginia has a big alumni basketball base and even the area you grew up, there's a lot of professional basketball players come from that area. Um, mm-hmm. Is there somebody that you reached out to, um, somebody older or somebody like a veteran that has played overseas that can kind of help you and kind of, you know, give you tips about, you know, being successful and how to succeed playing in the early? Yeah. So um, Anthony Gill played, um, he mm-hmm. played at Kempke and um, I'm close with Anthony. So, um, and I knew he played, uh, he play, and he, you know, he succeeded at the early level. So, just having conversations with him, asking what to expect, you know, how to approach it, um, you know, what the atmosphere is like, how's overseas life, how's, you know, the travel, how's your league, whatever the case may be. So just asking him, asking him a ton of questions and, you know, try to pick his brain as much as possible. But he, he was great. Um, he was great in answering my questions. Hmm. Now we got to, you got to humor me a little bit. This is a question I asked everybody. Um, it's kind of a funny question, but it's, if you were, you know, if you had a, a magic, you know, fortune teller ball and it, the roles were reversed right now and you're the veteran, you're me, what advice would you give to your younger self? And then also the second part of that question is, you know, where do you see your career? What are your career goals when you become an old veteran like me? <laughs> um, I think if I were you, I would just tell me to try to stay in the middle as much as possible um, to be where, to be where your feet are as much as possible. Um, because, you know, obviously like we've seen how the, the roller coasters of the season and how the emotions can go. Um, I think trying to stay in the middle as much as possible, because you can go from playing bad to playing well to, you know, yeah. to, or, you know, personally playing well to playing bad to playing okay or whatever. I think personally, you know, or just, you know, you, well, if I were you, I would just tell me, all right, stay in the middle, stay grounded. Like it's a long season. Be patient, stick with it. You know, it's not going to be a perfect season. Just continue to grow and try to get better. So I think that's some advice I would probably probably give. Awesome, man. And now we're going to get into our quick shots. Name a retired player that you would like to play against. Uh, Tyrese Bryce. Tyrese Bryce. Yeah, that's that's a great answer. That's a great answer. Tyrese has yet to say he's retired, though, so you said it for him. So I'm going to say (laughs) (laughs) How did you celebrate or did you celebrate when you got the news that you, you know, you signed your contract to Olympia Milano? I can be honest. Where I was, I was in Walmart walking with my mom and my dad. (laughs) (laughs) I was in Walmart walking with my mom and my dad. and, uh, And the contract came on. I was like, oh, we got the contract. Uh, Slurge on some Walmart. Slurge on some Walmart. (laughs) My dad is a uh, coach, and my dad is uh, very just like, like he stays in the middle about a lot. Like he never not too high, not too low. He was like, he's like, I got the contract. He's like, oh great, congrats. Uh, Get that twelve pack of water. (laughs) (laughs) Carried it to the car. We'll talk about it when we get home. No, no, it was just, uh, it was a good moment. Just, um, we looked at it as, you know, just an opportunity, another opportunity to play at a high level and to grow and uh, just to get better, man. Um, I'm thankful for sure. Um, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm happy. What arena in the EuroLeague are you looking forward to playing in or what I should, or ones that we played in already? Which one has been your favorite so far? I haven't been in these arenas, but you only see, you know, the atmosphere like yeah. in uh, in Red Star, the, the atmosphere is same. Panda, yeah. obviously, Olympiacos. The like when we played Olympiacos here, they had fans come, you know, uh, to Milan. So I mean, yeah, 
for me, it's not about like, oh, which one I'm, I'm just excited to play in all of them, to be honest. Like, I love those yeah. environments where like the fans, uh, you feel like everybody's against you and you can just go in there and try to try to beat up on teams. But no, it's um, I think, you know, most of the, most of all these places that we're, we're going to play in, these fans are, are really good. And uh, our, our fans are, you know, I'm, I'm biased, but I think our fans, <laughs> our fans are the best. I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Appreciate you uh, answering the questions and, and the EuroLeague fans getting to know you a little, a little bit better. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, all EuroLeague fans, for watching A Quarter with Kyle Hines. Until next time.